Blender 3.0 is just about to be released. A few years ago, I made a fork from the fantastic Ant landscape add-on that's included with Blender. It retains the ability to make all sorts of landscapes, but instead of creating geometry, it creates height and normal maps as well as erosion maps. Then it displays the result using modifiers on a simple plane. I think that gives it a lot of flexibility in terms of resolution. It also generates some sample materials to take advantage of the texture maps that you get uh, from that erosion module. If you haven't used uh, this add-on before, I've called it TXA AND. I suggest you go to the video linked in the description. It'll give you a full rundown on what it is and uh, how to use it. So I thought I might celebrate Blender 3.0 by adding a few functions to this uh, to this add-on while I was upgrading it just to uh, just to work with the new program. And the main one of these is export uh, is to bake to a PBR material. I'd like to demonstrate that by adding a, adding a new landscape and by baking down its procedural material to a PBR material and then exporting to an external program, in this case, Unreal Engine. So let's get started and create a new TXA landscape. Now, at the moment, the resolution is quite low. It's only 128 by 128, which is perfect for getting the material set up the way that we want everything operates nice and fast. I'll just go to um, the EV mode. Uh, I might just adjust the lighting slightly so that we can see it more clearly. Uh, that's good. And we'll go ahead and run the landscape eroder, which will create that erosion pattern and also add a material to it. And the material will choose forested in this instance. So I'll go ahead and run the landscape eroder. This is what we end up with and what it's generated is a Blender procedural material, which of course is very good and the results are very detailed because it uses procedural noise, etc. What I'll do once we're happy with this material is I'll recreate it in a higher resolution before we export it. So we'll go back to this texture size and I'll make it a full 1024 to get a good level of detail. Press the regenerate and that will recreate the height map giving us more detail to the shape of the mountain that we created. There's our additional detail. So once again, we'll run the landscape eroder uh, with the forested preferred material. On my computer, this takes about three minutes to run at that high resolution. So I'll just skip forward in the video. Oh, there, the texturing's done and you can see we have a higher level of detail in our material. Now I'll select Bake to PBR Material. If I click on that, it will work away and use the built-in Blender baking functions to reproduce the same procedural texture, but bake it to flat uh, images like base color, normal map, roughness, and those sort of um, textures and the advantage of this is well one the texture will be faster to run the material will be faster to use in blender it's a lighter sort of material to use so it might be worthwhile doing even if you want this as a background in a blender file but in particular most external programs all external programs are not really going to understand the blender procedural material they're going to expect um, one of these pbr materials and so you can see the material has changed. It doesn't look a whole lot different, although some things have been lost. The resolution, although we, although we selected 1024 by 1024, uh, that's still not as high as the procedural uh, model resolution. So it looks a little different, but it's not too bad. And you can see the material now just has a single principal BSDF and it's driven by a variety of texture images. In this case, things like the base color image. So that's good. Let's export this to Unreal Engine. And there's a few simple steps to this. Um, the first step, well, this is not an essential step by any means, but let's have a quick review of what this model actually is. It's actually, if I go to edit mode, it's a simple plane with four vertices. Then it has modifiers. First, there's a simple subsurf modifier, which 
divides that seven times and gives us a comparatively large number of vertices, in fact 16,000 at this point in time, for a seven level subsurf. And then it uses an image to displace the model and make it the mountain shape. Now 16,000 is quite a lot of vertices, uh, and we can adjust that using the number of uh, levels that we select on that subsurf modifier to reduce it down to a small number or a big number. But rather than just winding that down, a better way to reduce the number of vertices is to take this up to quite a high number. Uh, I might go a little further, go to 9. That's over 250,000 vertices. But what I'll do now is to apply that subsurf and apply the displace modifier and instead I'll add a decimate modifier. Now decimate is a good way on this particular type of model to reduce the number of vertices while still retaining quite a reasonable shape. Let's divide the number of vertices by 100. So it started off with 250,000. Uh, now it's got the, face, the number of vertices down to 2,600. That's a much smaller number. And yet, what do you know, the model actually looks pretty much the same. I don't have to apply it, I could export it like this, but I will apply it. And then in edit mode, we can see that comparatively small number of vertices and how the decimate modifier has neatly picked the right places to put them. We'll just select only the outside edge, because I just like to do this and remove those vertices and that just gets rid of that sort of artificial looking square outline and gives us a nice model to export only two and a half thousand vertices and yet it looks like it's got a good level of detail so now the things that are essential to export um, when the when the add-on operates the textures that it generates are automatically packed into the blend file so they're not sort of um, put on your hard disk as individual texture files and the external program is going to need to see those external png or jpeg files so in order to put them on the hard disk we first have to save the actual blend file and i'll save it here as landscape.blend and then from the file menu, we'll go to external data and we'll unpack those resources. In this case, the resources are all those texture files like base color that are packed into the blend file. And we will unpack the resource, oops, we will unpack the resources. And I'm going to choose write files to the current directory. So that will save them in the directory where the blend file has just been saved. And we'll just we'll just um, find them, and you can see it's <coughs> put those files into a textures directory. And finally, we're going to um, do an export. And because we're going to Unreal Engine, it seems happiest with a uh, Autodesk FBX file. So we'll export this as an FBX file and choose just selected objects in case we have other objects in the scene and without really changing the options i'll just go export fbx one thing i find if you're doing this for the first time it's probably not a bad idea just to completely go to a, wipe this all out and just try importing it back again just to double check that all the information that you think got saved to the file in fact did get saved to the file correctly so I'll do that, we'll go back to Eevee, we'll have a look, and what do you know, it does seem to have um, retained that material and all the textures quite well. So now I'll just jump into Unreal Engine, where I have an empty level just sitting here waiting for me. And we'll go and find that FBX file that we, that we generated just before, and I'll just drag that into Unreal into an appropriate folder of the content browser. Um, we bring up the import options. It's already looking for a local material which is suitable, so I won't change any of these options. I'll just hit the import button and we'll see what happens. So there's our landscape asset. If I load it, what do you know? It actually looks pretty good. 
Now, it's not guaranteed that it will look good on the frame. It um, is quite common uh, that we have to go to the material. So I'll just double click there and just check how it mapped the various textures to the inputs on its, uh, on its own PBR node. Now, we can see there's a few little issues. Um, we have applied an emissive uh, an emissive texture. We don't really need that, so I'll delete it. And here is a roughness, but it's put it into the metallic input. Uh, it doesn't do that if metallics, if you have a separate metallic map, but because the landscape doesn't have a metallic map, um, we have to just connect that up to the to the roughness. And then I think that's going to be okay. Let's just save that and have another look at our landscape. That's just a quick example of exporting one of these landscapes into a third party program. This will work for Substance Painter uh, with slightly different techniques of course and, uh, and other external game engines and programs. And then we have two more little features. The first is the replace textures function. Imagine you've tweaked one of the materials just the way you like it. Then you want to make a second landscape asset and use the same material. You can just copy the material across, but it's still using the erosion texture maps from the first model, so everything's in the wrong place. Just hit the Replace Textures button and the erosion map references in the material will be replaced by the correct ones from the current model. And finally, one last thing. I've added a new texture into the preferred material called High Peak. I'm afraid it's a bit of work in progress. I wanted an alpine scene, but uh, one of those high mountains exposed to wind where the snow doesn't pile in on the top of the mountain, but in effect um, the snow is sort of uh, forced into all the little crevices and cracks. Requires a high resolution. This one's done at 1024, but even higher is good and it relies on the avalanche settings um, for where the snow goes. So a little bit of fiddling with them will determine how much snow you get, how much is in the valleys, and uh, how the snow is arranged. Well, that's all for now. Um, this release, I think, is done. And in the future, perhaps I'll have to look at some of the new features of Blender 3, such as the geometry nodes and the asset builder. So I might have a think about that. Catch you later.